there are approximately 285 million people with visual impairments around the world. Making your app accessible not just opens it up to these users, but it has a potential to improve design for everyone. Most people are familiar with an accessibility service called TalkBack, which is a screen reader utility for people who are blind and visually impaired. With TalkBack, the user performs input via gestures such as swiping or dragging or an external keyboard. The output is usually spoken feedback. There are two gesture input modes. The first one is touch exploration, where you drag your finger across the screen. And the second one is linear navigation, where you swipe left and right with your finger until you find the item of interest. Once you arrive to the item you're interested in, you double tap on it to activate. The primary way in which you can attach alternative text description for your UI elements to be spoken by TalkBack is by using an Android attribute called Content Description. If you don't provide Content Description for an image button, for example, the experience for a TalkBack user can be jarring. Unlabeled button. Double tap to activate. Unlabeled button. Double tap to activate. For decorative elements such as spacers and dividers, setting content description to null will tell TalkBack to ignore and not speak these elements. Make sure to not include control type or control state in your content description. Words like buttons, selected, checked, etc. as Android natively does that for you. Android Lint automatically show you which UI controls lack content descriptions. To keep TalkBack's spoken output tidy, you can arrange related content into groups by using focusable containers. When TalkBack encounters such a container, it will present the content as a single announcement. For more complex structures such as tables, you can assign focus to a container holding one piece of the structure, such as a single row. Grouping content both reduces the amount of swiping the user has to do while streamlining speech output. Here is an example of how ungrouped table content works. Song details. Name. Hey Jude. Artists. The Beatles. Cost. $1.45. And here's the same content with grouping applied. Content grouping activity. Song details. Name. Hey Jude. Artists. The Beatles. Cost. $1.45. You should manually test your app with TalkBack and Eyes Closed to understand how a blind user may experience it. We also provide Accessibility Scanner as an app in Google Play. It suggests accessibility improvements automatically by looking at content labels, clickable items, contrast, and more. Vision impairments doesn't just refer to blindness. 65% of our population is farsighted for example. With careful design, you can make sure that many of your visually impaired users can have a positive experience without having to rely on TalkBack. Begin by making sure that UI of your apps works with other accessibility settings, including increased font size and magnification. Keep your touch targets large, at least 48 by 48 dp. This makes them easier to distinguish and touch. Provide adequate color contrast. The World Wide Web Consortium created color contrast accessibility guidelines to help. And to assist users with color deficiencies, use cues other than color to distinguish UI elements. For example, more descriptive instructional text. If you're using custom views or drawing your app window using OpenGL, you need to manually define accessibility metadata so that accessibility services can interpret your app properly. The easiest way to achieve this goal is to rely on the Explore by Touch helper class. With just a few methods, you can build a hierarchy of virtual views that are accessible to TalkBack. Making your app accessible doesn't just open it to new users. It helps to make the world a better place one app at a time. To read more about developing and testing your apps for users with visual impairments, check out the links below. 
Also, check out the video on developing for users with motor impairments.